Overwatch 2 Season 2 needs to be a massive success because Season 1 has been absolutely terrible. Ladies and gentlemen, hello and welcome to the channel. So in this video, we're going to go over what Blizzard are going to announce in Season 2 and what they well need to change based off what has happened in Season 1 because there has been some massive problems with Season 1. So the first place we're going to start is this wonderful graphic. Now this is taken from the Play Overwatch Twitter account and it is the Overwatch 2 reveal sort of timeline that they've got. So on November the 26th, we get the world premiere of the Ramatra gameplay trailer. Now, I'm really looking forward to that because there's tons of questions like how does his tank form work? What does his barrier look like? Loads of questions. What's his primary fire look like when he's in Omnic form? What happens with his fists? There's just loads of questions here, so I can't wait to see that. That's probably going to be awesome. But what is also awesome is today's video sponsor. Check this out. Today's video is sponsored by NVIDIA and HP Omen. And I want to show you guys this laptop because I am not joking. The performance here is absolutely ridiculous and i'm just going to show you guys so i'm playing overwatch 2 here and this is at 1440p the monitor on this laptop is 165 hertz ips display you can see the rest of the stats on the screen there for the laptop or the specs this is just crazy i'm playing at over 200 fps here uh, let me show you so here's me playing a bit of kanazaka deathmatch look at that fps you, you look at that fps that is mental over 200 fps on a laptop I, I, I can't believe it. It's just ridiculous. I'll show you the settings as well. So I generally play Overwatch on high settings, and you can see my settings here. I'm going to bring them up on the screen. Uh, also, you will notice as well that NVIDIA Reflex is enabled on this as well um, because, of course, the laptop does support that. And the good news is the HP RTX gaming laptops start from $749.99. So keep an eye out for Black Friday and Cyber Monday deals on the HP Omen products to bag yourself a juicy deal. There is a link in the video description below go and check it out these laptops are really really good value then on november the 27th we get the start of a five-part series which goes into detail on Ramatra. these Ramatra developer updates now this is really cool um again pretty interesting we're not just getting one massive developer update video we're just getting a bunch of small videos which i guess are going to be based on like i don't know maybe Ramatra's law maybe his like abilities and how they work and maybe like uh i, I presume like Ramatra's skins or something like that then on november the 29th we get another world premiere i mean they're all, they're all going to be world premieres i don't know why they've put that there but it's just funny it's like that guy from the game awards world premiere Rawr. anyway season two gameplay trailer which I'm really looking forward to because that should show us the new stuff in Season 2. So we should see like new skins, um, all that kind of stuff. Season 2 content roadmap as well, which I am really looking forward to because we're going to look at the Season 1 one in a minute and we can sort of compare, uh, or well, not really compare because we don't have the new one for Season 2, but we can make some assumptions, I think, on what they need to change. And then, of course, on December the 2nd, we get map reveal. And I think December the 2nd is when this all goes live. Um, so yeah, new map new hero, loads of stuff. This is good, Blizzard. However, let's take a look at what happened in Season 1 and what really needs to change. So this is the content roadmap that they put out before the game started. And this actually goes into a bit of detail on Season 1, Season 2, and then future stuff. So in Season 1, three new heroes. Yeah, we know who they are. Six new maps. Yeah, 30 new skins or 30 plus new skins, which were very questionable quality. New battle pass, new mythic skin, new game mode which of course was posh. Then we go into December the 6th. Oh, actually, December the 6th is when it starts, not the 2nd. So ignore me saying December the 2nd is when it started. It's not, it's the 6th. Um, that's when we'll be able to play Ramatra and all of that. But they're going to announce a new map on the 2nd. Anyway, we get a new tank hero. We now know that's Ramatra. We get a new map. We don't know what that is, but we're going to find out on December the 2nd. Another 30 plus new skins, a new battle pass, and a mythic skin. Now, this is what they advertise Season 1 as containing. Now, we know Season 1 contained more stuff than this because... But actually, what's really interesting is the Widow skin there. And that's not actually been for sale yet. But I, I guess that's going to pop up probably pretty soon in the store. Um, but yeah, we got this, um, which was fine, you know, and it was okay. And it was, a, I think, a pretty mediocre start. So I think we should move on. This is a comment from Jared, who is the new executive producer. He came from Riot Games. He came from Bungie, worked on Destiny. He also worked for PopCap, I think, uh, on Peggle. So this is someone with a ton of experience. And, and this is, is what he says. 
in his blog post talking about short and long term. So he says, in short term, in season two, we've changed up our rewards a bit so that each event has a skin you can earn by playing, in addition to the other cosmetic rewards we already offer. We're also going to continue our Twitch Drops program so you can earn skins and in-game goodies by supporting your favorite content creators provided they're on Twitch. We will be working on the long-term plans. We want upcoming seasons to feel more rewarding than season one. Now, what I'll say on that comment there is, yeah, it's good that they're putting skins into events so you can earn them maybe that was always the case anyway because think of the reaper skin that we got for for free during wrath of the uh the bride um that might have just been the event earnable skin but they gave it away for free to try and appear like hey we, we're, we're caring we're giving you stuff for free but then actually that shoots them in the foot for when the event comes out because then you can't earn any of the skins and in fact you're forced to watch twitch streams which maybe you just don't even care about to get access to an old legendary skin which was the winston uh werewolf skin also on the topic of twitch um this like, this is not really... They're not really offering... Okay, they are offering players rewards here for watching Twitch streams, but this is straight up a marketing activity to get more eyes onto the game. Now, I don't have no issue with that, but I guess kind of packaging that is like, oh, yeah, but we are doing drops campaigns. It's like, yeah, but, mate, I want to play the game, not watch Twitch streamers. You know what I mean? So just put these in the game. I know that they are available in the game uh, as sort of delayed rewards. Normally, uh, I think it's the next season. You can just buy them in the Hero Gallery, but, yeah. So, yeah, the Twitch stuff, I'm going to take that with a pinch of salt. Anyway, long term, for Season 3 and beyond, we're looking at a mix of Battle Pass changes, more interesting challenges to pursue, and more interesting play-focused progression systems for you all to dig into. We'll be able to talk about some of these changes soon, but other changes may take more time to lock in. So, Season 3, again, is a long way away. We're only about to get into Season 2, but he is saying there's going to be some big changes. So, the question here is, what do these changes mean? need to be and what did they get wrong in season one overpriced cosmetics i don't think we really need to go into much detail about this but the cosmetics are horrifically overpriced in this game they're effectively charging you 19 dollars for a legendary skin now the quality of these legendary skins is very questionable some of them are okay some of them are really not okay and i guess the best example is the moira skin the moira mime skin which is Got a bit of a discount at the moment, which did look like Blizzard were reducing the prices of these items. However, it transpires that this is actually just a Black Friday sale, but it's not really overly explained in the game client. You have to dig into little news posts and stuff like that. It's very deceptive, I think. So basically, the prices are still going to be, you know, 1900 for a legendary skin. But this Moira skin, like at what point is this a legendary skin? It is a recolor of the base Moira Overwatch 2 skin, which is the base skin, and it has a beret and slightly different makeup. That is it. This is not a legendary skin. However, they are trying to get legendary monies for this skin. This is a major problem because this means that they're probably going to keep doing this with mediocre skins that should be epic because this is an epic skin charging legendary prices by adding different price, uh, different things into the bundle to make it appear as if it's a good deal. It's not great. They really need to sort this out. The store, to me, has been an absolute load of crap in Overwatch 2. I play this game every day. I make loads of videos on this game. I should be one of the customers that is pouring money into this game, yet I have spent no money on this game beyond buying the Watchpoint pack. I mean, of course, I'll probably buy the Battle Pass for Season 2, and I guess that's probably enough for Blizzard's side if I'm spending $10 every nine weeks that's probably enough they they probably don't care but my argument is surely i would be somebody who you'd want to pump money into the game but because i've you know i, I look at this logically and i don't just meme and just buy all the stuff and go here's a video with me buying all the stuff because i'm a dickhead i don't do any of that stuff because i don't agree with the prices if i did agree with the prices maybe i would but i don't so that's a problem Come on, Blizzard, you need to sort this out. The price is horrific. And I'm not even mentioned the crazy souvenirs, which are very expensive. The weapon charms, very expensive. It's, it's just really, really expensive for what you are getting, which is just mediocre cosmetics, which is a massive shame because Overwatch in the past, historically, was known for industry class leading cosmetics in the skins. They were amazing. They're kind of losing that now, and I'm worried. Well, this ties into the end of the last run i just had poor quality skins the skin quality is all over the place you get a good skin and then maybe a bad skin then you get a skin that shouldn't be a legendary being branded as a legendary because they want to pump the price up this is terrible and this really really needs to stop so i hope in season two we get an awesome theme for this season and we get awesome detailed skins that make me maybe maybe go oh I would consider buying that. I still wouldn't if the prices are the same, but 
I would look at it and think, oh, yeah, go on. You're doing the right thing, please. You are now at least trying to give that level of quality that you're known for. So there is, I mean, there is opportunity for them to do this. They can dig themselves out of the hole because we have to remember that back with the launch of season one, this was the start of a new thing for Blizzard. They'd never actually done anything like this. Well, the Overwatch team hadn't done anything like this. A game is a live service with content that needs to be constantly plugged in. So I think you can easily tell that a lot of the stuff is kind of poor quality. They haven't spent as much time in it that maybe they would. They just needed to get it together to get it out there in the door, uh, get it out the door to go, here's our finished thing, get on with it sort of thing. But now this is the real time where things need to change, right? Season two, season three, we need to start seeing updates because if we see more of the same, more poor quality skins and poor quality cosmetics, this isn't going to be great for the game, is it? And it could start dropping off in terms of player base and we really don't want that to happen. So I really hope Blizzard can pull this out of the bag. Bad Battle Pass rewards. Now, the Battle Pass is pay $10 for the privilege of grinding to unlock items. There are some okay skins. There are some absolutely terrible skins. This season is supposed to be a cyberpunk themed season, yet the Battle Pass only has cyberpunk Genji and cyberpunk name card and I think it's got the cyberpunk Pashamari uh, and the, um, the Diva skin. Beyond that, it's like, well, what? You want this Cassidy that just looks green? What about this, um, I don't know, Vietnam-style Winston skin? It makes no sense. Oh, also, there was the Kiriko um, uh, Cyberpunk skin, which I can't believe I forgot about that because it's actually probably the best skin in the whole pack. I think that's actually better than the Genji, if you ask me. Uh, but yeah, so you do get a good Mythic skin at the end. Uh, but I still I still think it's pretty bad. You know, one idea that I've been thinking about, and, and I'm, I'm sure Blizzard probably looked at this, but I, this might actually be a, a better idea for the Battle Pass. Imagine if you buy the Battle Pass, but you get the Mythic skin straight away. And then throughout the Battle Pass, you are unlocking the different customizations for the battle, for the Mythic skin. I think that would be way better than having it right at the end. Now, of course, Overwatch still suffers from, if you don't play Genji, you don't actually care. I don't play Genji, but it was a cool skin to get, but I'm never going to use it because I don't play Genji. But if it was like a Zarya skin or if it was a Soldier skin, then yeah, you know, I'd be loving it even more. So Overwatch is always going to stuff with that. But yeah, I think it'd be cool if they kind of reversed the... The skin like so you pay the ten dollars you get the skin straight away and then you start you know sort of unlock stuff but i guess that probably doesn't make it unique does it because the, the whole game would be flooded with uh mythic genjis and also of course why what am i saying that because you can buy battle pass tiers can't you and of course they want the whales to spend hundreds of dollars just unlocking it so that's never gonna happen so that's wishful thinking again off me uh, but yeah the, the rewards are terrible they need to sort the rewards out there needs to be better rewards we don't want crap like player icons that nobody cares about I guess they're still going to do that, but we want better quality skins, better quality rewards, better quality highlight intros. The Ash highlight intro has got a, 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 an error on her mouth when she opens her mouth. Like it clips through, a mouth clips through like a skull. It, it, it's like, how is this past any kind of quality control? Fix it, Blizzard, because it is absolutely embarrassing. The Battle Pass also expires in Season 1. Uh, now, I think this is wishful thinking in the extreme, but it would be awesome if battle passes didn't expire and you could just continually keep working on battle passes because if you've had things happen in real life maybe you've had an injury maybe you've been on holiday maybe i don't know you've had a child there's loads of things you could come up with this is going to prevent you from playing overwatch which means that if you suddenly only got a week left to play the game and uh oh i'm only level 20 in the battle pass it's gonna be really hard to get to level 80 to get the genji so the only well option you've got is to spend money now i think that's I don't want to use the word predatory because that is a bit extreme, but it is taking the piss, that is. That is Blizzard are going, well, you know what? You may be time constrained, but guess what? You can pay to get out of it. And I hate that. What would be better is if you bought the Battle Pass ticket, you could just go back and unlock the Battle Pass. And you know what? Think about this come season six, season seven. People might actually, you know, have taken time away from the game, but they may have bought Battle Passes. But then maybe they come back and they start hardcore grinding the game, let's say in season six. They finish that battle pass. But guess what? They want to go to season five because maybe it's got a Torbjorn legendary skin. And they're like, okay, well, I'm now going to start unlocking that. But again, this is wishful thinking because I'm sure these mythic skins will just go straight in the store for some absolutely insane price for people that have missed them with a the battle pass. Uh, so yeah, but yeah, maybe Blizzard can make the battle pass instead of don't expire, but it's probably not the most cash money viable option. Restricted map pools. I hate this. I absolutely hate this. Now, Blizzard have said the reason why is they haven't fully finished editing the maps for 5v5. Now, when you look at the changes to the maps like Gibraltar, like King's Row for 5v5, it is literally two or three extra bits of cover. You have got to be taking the piss if that takes any more than two days to do, right? That is just not going to do that. Okay, maybe they want to test the maps over and over again, but come on. It's quite obvious 
certain points on certain maps are very open. The, the, the big one is Rialto, right? Look at the first point on Rialto. Pretty open, but we know there's already a bit more cover there. We've seen it in some of the video clips they've put out. What about over the bridge and going to the next point of the map? Yeah, again, it's a bit open. We need a bit more cover, blah, 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 blah. Th this isn't something that should take very long. So I think that's a bad excuse what they're using. However, restricted map pools, it is very disheartening when you're just playing the same what feels like two or three maps over and over again. Doesn't feel great. And there's so many maps in Overwatch. If the, the map pool, if they want to keep it, they should make it bigger. But I really do not like this idea of restricted map pools at all. Very slow balance. Now, this is... Blizzard have said this is technical reasons, yada, 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 yada. The mid-season cycle patch, which is going to happen in the middle of every season, so around four and a half weeks into a season, was heavily delayed for season one. Now, this means the balance has been very stale for a lot of the season. The first week, maybe two weeks, it was quite in flux, but then it started to settle. It became clear which tanks were very strong. And then that was the meta. It was Zarya was everywhere in every single game to the point of if you didn't have her, you would just lose. Finally, Blizzard get around to nerfing her, but it was so delayed by literally weeks that um, it, it, it's now like we're going into season two and there's going to be another balance change. So we're not really going to get to experience the changes that they've made already. However, talking of the changes they've made already, one glaring omission is the Sojourn, just no nerf. Sojourn is incredibly powerful with a railgun. I've been over this time and time again. You guys know by now how ridiculously powerful this character is. She charges a railgun up and then she just shoots you in the head and then you're dead. And it is so easy for her to do this. She needs to be looked at. Now, maybe she's going to get looked at. Well, we think she's going to get looked at for season two because Jared does sort of allude to that in the blog post he made. Um, but the question is, why isn't this in the mid-season balance patch? If they're going to look at other heroes like Doomfist definitely needs looking at and a bunch of other heroes, maybe they are the marquee changes for season two. But I don't understand why things like the Sojin change don't go through uh, for the mid-season balance patch. So weird. So they really, really, really need to update the game quicker. They need to hit this mid-season cycle patch when it's mid-season and it needs to make the changes that are required for that season doesn't need to drop out or skimp out on a few to save them for like the next season needs to make the changes there and then to show that blizzard are being active with the game's balance yeah so i think i'll leave it at that guys the game hopefully can weather this storm i hope season two is much more improved than season one and i hope season three and beyond is even more improved now there is one thing i didn't talk about which was the heroes being locked in the battle pass and i think i'm 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 flogging a dead horse at this point now i i don't like this i never will they need to not be in the battle pass or if they are be very easy to obtain not at level 55 but we've got no indication that that's going to change for season two uh, not yet anyway and no indication that that's going to change in the future because it is core to the monetization of the battle pass in fact it is the draw of the battle pass that you buy it and get immediate access to whoever the new hero is on that battle pass now the kind of funny thing is the first two seasons we get a new hero but season three we won't season four we will season five we won't season six we will season um seven we won't because it alternates when we get a, between a new hero new game mode or new map um so things are going to get weird as battle passes pop up and there's no hero because why buy the battle pass maybe that's when we see them drop the mythic skin as, as the uh initial reward anyway ladies and gentlemen thank you for listening and watching to the video i hope you've enjoyed this if you did remember to like the video leave a comment below because it helps an absolute ton and do just let me know what you think about the state of the game and what you're looking forward to in season two of overwatch 2 all right guys i've been Stalosa, and i'll catch you lot on the next one see you soon